welcome to our service of evening prayer on this first Sunday in Advent, the beginning of a new church year. As usual, we are using the order from the Book of Common Prayer. So let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved, we are come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer unto him through our Lord Jesus Christ our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace, and to ask on behalf of all people such things as their well-being doth require. Wherefore, let us sit in silence and remember God's presence with us now. We say together the general confession. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitents, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalm set for this, more, this evening is Psalm 9, verses 1 to 10. I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will speak of all thy marvellous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee, yea, my songs will I make of thy name, O thou most highest. While mine enemies are driven back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence, for thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou art set in the throne that judgest right. Thou hast rebuked the heathen and destroyed the ungodly. Thou hast put out their name for ever and ever. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end. Even as the cities which thou hast destroyed, their memorial is perished with them. But the Lord shall endure for ever. He hath also prepared his seat for judgment. For he shall judge the world in righteousness and minister true judgment unto the people. The Lord also will be a defence for the oppressed even a refuge in due time of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast never failed them that seek thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, 
world without end. Amen. The Magnificat My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm, he hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed for ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our reading this evening is from St Mark's Gospel, chapter 13, beginning at verse 24. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn. Or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Here ends the reading. So we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. 
O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. The Collect for the First Sunday in Advent Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armour of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which thy Son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, now and for ever. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is the first Sunday in Advent and the start of a new church year. And I hope that you've all got your Advent calendars ready at home, ready to open the first door and start that counting down till Christmas. It's time to tell the great story of Christmas once again. And it's surprising, isn't it? No matter how cynical or world-weary we become, this story still has the power to move us. It's a story that continues to touch us and even occasionally to stop us in our tracks as we hear some familiar word from scripture or a particular piece of music perhaps, or as this evening, that great prayer, the collect, for the first Sunday in Advent. That collect wakes us up and sums us up. It is the very essence of Advent. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armour of light now in the time of this mortal life. We're called out of the darkness of sin and sadness and told to put on the armour of light now in the time of this mortal life. Because the story of Advent and Christmas begins now in us today. Here we begin to open the doors of our hearts to welcome the Christ child. And as we do so, the light of Christ more and more floods into us with its grace and its beauty, healing us and judging us. These two great themes of Advent as our God comes to us, healing and judgment. Those two things are together, they are inextricably linked. For when we, li when we allow that light to shine into us, then it shows up all the dark places in our hearts. Places in us where there is hurt, resentment, petty hatreds, fear or unforgiving feelings. In Christ's light we see ourselves as God sees us and that is our judgment and we know that we don't measure up to what God wants and expects from us. So Advent is the time for repentance, 
repentance, that theological word meaning turning, turning to face our God and turning away from ourselves and our self-obsession. We're called to turn to the light, to put on the armour of light and to shine and reflect that light into the darkness of the world around us. But we can only do that shining and fulfil God's will if we ourselves are healed and made whole by the light. We invite the light of Christ to enter us and transform us and to make us into the people that God wants us to be. And that is the healing power of God's light in our lives. So as you open the doors of your Advent calendar in the next week or two, remember too that we, God's people, are called to open the doors of our hearts, little by little, to Christ each day, and to welcome his light and love into our lives more and more. And as we open ourselves to this purifying light, we will find our longing for God's peace and joy increasing. And meeting God's longing, God's yearning to find a home in us. And in that meeting of desire and love, we find our true home in Christ, and Christ finds his home in us. And that is Emmanuel, God with us, the true miracle of Christmas. Amen. So we come to our time of prayer. Come Lord, come down, come in, come among us. Enter into our darkness with your light. Come, fill our emptiness with your presence. Dispel the clouds and reveal your glory. Come, refresh, renew, restore us. Come Lord, come down, come in, come among us. Come Lord, be known in your church. For without you we have no message. We have no power. Come fill us with your presence, that we may proclaim your peace. Lord, make us aware, alert to your coming, that we may reveal your glory in the world. We pray for those who walk in darkness, that they may see your light. We remember those whose lives are clouded with troubles and pray that they may behold your glory. Lord, stir up your strength and come among us. Come, Lord, and give peace to your world. Disperse the clouds of war and violence, of calamity and disaster. Let your power and your glory be revealed to the nations. We pray for all who watch and wait while we sleep, for the NHS workers for the police and ambulance workers, for firefighters, and all who work in the dark hours of the night. Lord, stir up your strength and come among us. Come, Lord, be known in our homes, that our homes may reflect your love. Come in our workplaces, that they may reflect your glory, that we may rejoice in each other's presence that we may be fully aware of others and sensitive to their needs. Lord, stir up your strength and come among us. Come, Lord, to all who are unable to cope at this time, to all who are weighed down by troubles. We pray for the sick and for those who have the care of them. We remember those whose lives are clouded with despair. We pray for the depressed and the suicidal. We remember friends and loved ones in their troubles. In a moment of quiet, we bring to the Lord anyone on our hearts today. 
Lord, stir up your strength and come among us. Come, Lord of our salvation, save us and heal us and we shall be saved. We pray for friends and loved ones departed, especially for the recently departed. May they now rejoice in the fullness of your presence and your glory. Lord, stir up your strength and come among us. We finish with the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for joining me this evening in evening prayer. Do pray that you will have a good week to come. Here we are in Advent already, not very long till Christmas. So we hope to see you soon. <laughs>